Okay, so last time we practiced doing the basics, the isometric cube. So once you are proficient at drawing a keyboard shape, then we are going to use this technique to help build up more complicated shapes. And then we're going to use the idea of creating to get a basic shape and then change the shape inside of it once we've got the proportions just right. So let's draw a cylinder. So it needs to be longer than it is wider. Remember, the lines are parallel, so you can just check with your pencil. Okay, some basic things that you're going to need to do when you're drawing is find things like centers. So, easiest way to find a center of a square is to go from corner to corner where the line crosses. That should give you the center point. And then you can also find where it touches the edge of the squares as well. So when we're doing our cylinder, we're going to need to know certain things because we want to draw a circle in there and then extrude it to make a cylinder shape. So on each side, we're going to need that center line. So I've just drawn in the back of the square. So diagonals give you the center. And remember they all need to be on the same angle. So we're going to draw our squashed circle, so we're going to draw an ellipse in here. So you can do it a couple of times just to get your eye in. And then here. And then where the top and the bottom of the cylinder are, we'll just project the line back Again, using the same angle as the crating. And then we're going to go over it. So I'm just going to go over it with a Sharpie. So you can actually see what I'm doing. And then just trace that circular shape. And then the front of it. So when we've done that, we can then use our eraser and get rid of all the bits we don't want. So all those messy lines that you made will disappear and you should just end up with a nice cylinder shape. So this is the basics of using isometric crating to start laying out your positions, getting the composition, making everything line up nicely. And then a little technique for when you're doing design drawing is uh, if you weight the bottom line slightly heavier, it will make it look like it's got a bit of a shadow underneath and it will make it look like it's sat on the page rather than floating in midair but just a little bit like that. And then we will cover rendering, so shading and colouring it in at another time.